Meow. Hello and welcome from 13,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean. Sorry, I can't stop to talk now. I'm in the middle of a dogfight with a man from Belgium. Yes, I'm sorry about that. More about how you can use the telephone to shoot down Belgians later in the programme. But first, our main review this week is Rocket Night Adventures on the Mega Drive. And Violet Top Gun Berlin landed for just long enough last week to go behind the scenes of the most technically advanced concert ever staged. Well, if that's the nearest you get to musical composition, two or three notes on a piano and anybody with an earshot runs for cover with their fingers in their ears, then what you need is this. The Deluxe Music Construction Set 2. Now, if you remember the original, you will realise that this has taken seven years to come out. But when you see what the software is capable of, you will understand why. Well, this is just something by some unknown pianist called Scott Joplin. I, I don't think he'll do anything. But if you want to compose your own masterpiece, it couldn't be easier. We'll just stop Mr Joplin in mid-stride here. And um, all you've got to do is select the note you want. Crotchet, quaver, breathe, semi-breathe. And simply use the mouse to put it on the stave exactly where you think it should go. You hear the appropriate note as you do it. And if that wasn't easy enough, it gets simpler. Take the melody straight from the piano keys down the bottom here, and the computer will put the notes on the stave in the appropriate place. And then play it back to yourself. Anything you can do musically, this thing can do. In fact, you can even change the tempo. Now, I thought that was a bit slow. So if we change the tempo here, we play back my fabulous composition and just make it a little bit faster. Still sounds pretty dreadful though, doesn't it? The best though is yet to come, and to show you that bit, I've got to get rid of my fabulous musical score and make way once again for Mr Joplin. Now, Mr Joplin wrote Cleofa originally for the accordion, but we can soon do something about that. Let's just go along here, and it's a set instrument, and we can change that accordion to anything we like. Um, banjo, no, bass, no. Uh, oh yes, there we are, steel drums. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Cleopa by Mr. Scott Joplin, now on the steel drum. And on that note, Violet Berlin. Amazing. Our main review this week is Rocket Knight Adventures on the Mega Drive. Its hero, Sparkster, is the last in a long line of ancient and venerable rocket knights, so called because of their rocket powered backpacks. Here's the intrepid Robert. This is a very interesting game. It has all the elements of a first class platformer. It keeps you on your toes all the way through. This is the start of level two. There is a boss at the beginning of it, which is quite unusual, as it usually comes at the end. Sparkster is the main character in the game. While you move him, every part of his body moves. He has a jetpack on his back, which will fire him up into the air or along the ground. You can use it to get up to great heights, which I'm just used. He has a tail which you can cling on to ropes and trees and things. This is level five. The bosses in this game are very creative. I've just killed one of the bosses, but he'll come back again. There he is. This is still level five. The guards are chasing me through the building. I have to trap them in the lava. Bingo. I use the transporter to go to the next room. I have to knock the support, hold down my button, charge up my boosters, and then roar up into the sky. At first, I gave this game five stars, although after playing it for a while, it became very easy, so I gave it four stars. The cutesy character can be deceiving. It's a bit like Sonic, but my opinion is better. At first, I didn't think this was going to be my cup of tea, but if I had the money, I'd go out and buy this. And so the final scores for Rocket Knight Adventures. The girls gave it a good score of four out of five, and the boys liked it too. Four out of five from them. Thank you, Fertilers, and welcome to the most technically advanced concert ever staged. For my next number, I will be playing the music for Star Wing on the Mexican nurse flit with some very arresting visuals on the monitor screen.
Now, to produce the arresting visuals, make sure both controllers are plugged in, but play the game only with controller number one, and score more than 10,000 points. Then, when you die and go to the continue screen, by pressing Y or B, you can change your ship to any other ship in the game or any other object. Completely useless, but it looks nice and makes an ideal accompaniment to any technically advanced etc, etc. And now, for the moment you have all been waiting for. One, two, one, two. Hello, England! And welcome to Main Road Football Stadium, home of the Light Blues, Manchester City. Today is home to a different kind of team, the road crew of keyboard wizard Jean-Michel Jarre, who's touring Europe this autumn, playing the cast of thousands to an audience of millions. A major tour like this one is planned like a military operation. Like a small army, they bring their own catering, security and power. They used enough scaffolding to cover the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben. No wonder he's worn out. Jean-Michel Jars already directing operations for the stage crew and the band, who are getting ready for the sound check. It takes four days to build the set, but things only really come together in the last 24 hours before the performance. Much of the music is stored electronically on sequencers. Sequencers are computer-controlled keyboards. They talk to each other using a musical instrument digital interface, otherwise known as MIDI. Three hours before the gates are due to open, and they're on their final run-through for sound. There was a rehearsal last night just for lighting, but because of the complexity of the show, the sound check can take longer than the event itself. I managed to snatch a few seconds with the man responsible for the tour's smooth running, technical coordinator Simon Ransom. This is where we control and um, process most of the visual effects of the show. Um, control for lights, sound, slides, all that sort of stuff is done from the two towers. And then above us we have the lasers, the slide projectors, um, a lot of specialist lighting effects that we use for throwing images out against the stage and against the screens that we have up there. The show relies on MIDI. Each component of the show uses the time code of the MIDI signal as a reference point. So here's the time code, 10 hours, 7 minutes, 54 seconds, and the frames keep going round, the frames are 25th of a second. So, if the drummer decided to hit the symbol now, then that might trigger off uh, laser animations or fireworks or a sequencer. The musicians on stage play live on top of all the pre-arranged events, and that's the crux of it. All everybody else has to do is follow their cue. The gates are about to open. I've just got time to ask Jean-Michel what he thinks about the people who say that computers are killing music. They're wrong because uh, the emotions or lack of emotion is not the, the responsibility of the instrument, but the responsibility of the guy behind the instrument anyway, whatever it is, a tam-tam or a piano or a computer. The main difference between uh, electronics and uh, acoustics is the fact that with electronics you can be your own craftsman, you can, you can shape your own sound, you can uh, create your own sound exactly like a painter is able to create colors. I mean, most of the time in rock concerts, outdoor, I mean, the, the performer is as big as an ant on a stage and people can hardly see or hear anything. And in that case, I try to uh, start from my music as, as, a, as a musician and then to try to compose the visual track. Like when you are doing a movie, you do the soundtrack. In my case, I make the music and then I try to compose the visual track. Just like my garden on bonfire night, Jean-Michel Jarre's European tour finishes in his hometown of Lyon in France on October the 12th. Now for this week's news and previews. The latest add-ons for both Game Gear and Game Boy are these radio tuners. 
You simply plug them in where you'd normally put a cartridge and listen to the radio instead of playing a game. Unfortunately, it's FM only, but you do get a pair of stereo headphones. Should be in the shops in time for Christmas. Thunderhawk on the Mega CD is a helicopter-based tutor. There are a number of campaign scenarios to choose from, such as halting a gun-running operation in South America or stopping chemical warfare in Southeast Asia. So if you fancy becoming a missionary of heroic proportions, this could be the one for you. It's due out in October. The publishers of Mortal Kombat had a bad week last week. They were desperate to keep the cart from going in the shops before the official release date last Monday. Unfortunately, people came in demanding their deposits back because they'd managed to get the game elsewhere. This, by the way, is the SNES version. Yeah. Hello again, scrotty fertilers. <laughs> the soothing effects of pets. When it's all getting too much for me, I like to keep calm by feeding my goldfish. <laughs> to my piranha. <laughs> there you go, cuddles. <laughs> oh, what's that you say, cuddles? <laughs> Tell them at the cheat for Robocod on the Amiga 1200. Oh, good idea, right, I will. <laughs> on the title screen, all you have to do is type in O dot S dot, hit the space bar, friendly, F-R-I-E-N-D-L-Y. Now, at any point during the game, you can hit the letter M, like so, and you'll be prompted to enter a level code between 1 and 55 to get to any new level, like, uh, like this one here. <laughs> Marvellous. Oh, steady there, cuddles, steady. Daddy's here, daddy's here. <laughs> oh, ah, ah, ah! Still locked in battle, I'm afraid. This may look like any other flight sim, but it is, in fact, unique. You see, you're not just playing against the computer, but against real-life aces, who are most of whom are over 100 miles away from the studio. In fact, I'm even playing against that American reporter, Z Wright, who's playing in New York. I can talk to him using the communications panel, so let's see. Hi, Z. See what he comes back with. Yo, Violet, I'm going to get you. We'll see about that, not if I see him first. The game's actually called Air Warrior, and it's the first and only flight sim that you can play over the telephone lines. There's a range of different planes which all handle differently, and you can fight against up to 40 different people from all over the world. To play over the telephone lines, you need a modem. That's one of these, this little black box here that connects your computer to the telephone system. It'll also cost you £10 a month to use the service and the cost of a call to London. Now, Andy was also in that battle, playing via the PC, and I think I got him. All is not lost, though, because he can record the same battle on his computer and play it over and over again until he gets it right. Keep practicing, Andy. Yep, see, look, no hands. This is the film of the battle that we've just had, and obviously everybody's doing exactly the same thing as they did before. The cool thing is, though, if I press F8, I can release my plane from the fight. So I can control mine while everybody else does exactly the same thing as they did before. Better still, if I press N, I can see my own plane, which is about to crash into the side of a mountain at the moment. On using the direction keys, I can look at it from all sorts of different angles. It gives me a hideous disadvantage, I know, but I've never objected to that kind of thing. This game can be played without being plugged into a phone, and it'll run on most home computers. In fact, online games like this are going to become more and more popular. A modem for the Mega Drive has already been developed and should be available in this country next year. Now, for some more games reviews. First samurai on the snares is a tale of good versus evil. The young hero must battle against the demon king with the good magic of the wizard mage to help him. Here's Andy. This is a classic conversion of the original Amiga game. At first glance it looks the same. Once you get into it you'll find out otherwise. This is level two, time express. Food baskets need to be hit to open them so I can collect all the food. Axes give me a special weapon and this magic bell summons a sorcerer so a teeny will come and help me when I'm in trouble. Here I'll use the magic bell to freeze the ball so I can get to the mystic runes, which are little red things in the corner near to my force. Little genie is going to be summoned and is going to freeze all the balls with a stiller. I have to hit the balls to get past them, otherwise they will drain my energy, which is in the bottom left. Little stars flying about regain my force. Here I brought through um, the wall with the mystic to get a mystic rune. I did this by summoning my sorcerer with the bell. My sword is going to go because I've lost all my life. It will regain again when I get some more diamonds when I kill some more baddies. 
Breaking through windows can earn you food points or some extra bodies to kill. All in all, a good game, but definitely one for those who want a challenge. The graphics are good, but it would be better if you could have a change of character or even a two-player option. The sound of music has been improved from the Amiga version, but this game is just too old, too repetitive and too slow. And the scores for First Samurai? The girls gave it an average 3 out of 5, and the boys agreed. They gave it 3 out of 5 too. Garfield makes an appearance today in his own Game Boy title. He's taken time out from sleeping to visit some ancient ruins with his friend Odie the dog, but has fallen into a labyrinth of old rooms. Luckily, he's brought his drill along, as you do. Here's Angela to help him out. Garfield's one of my favourite cartoon characters, so I was really looking forward to playing this game. It does actually look like Garfield, and the animation is really good. I'm drilling there to get rid of that block. Collecting a bomb so I can blow up some baddies. Like that mushroom. You have to press select so you can blow up the bomb. Blow up the baddies. It's difficult with the buttons because you have to work out how to use them at first. This is the end of level key that comes down. And then you have to find the door. You have to blast the blocks away. And it can be a bit difficult because you have to be in the right place. But if you're not quick enough or you can't blast any more blocks, you can get a bit wedged in. It's difficult to find out how to jump. Ah, got wedged in. This game, it gets harder and harder as it goes along. I got to level 17 before I just had to give up because it was so impossible. There's a lot of Game Boy platform games being released recently, and Garfield is not the best of them. Just forget it. This was very hard, but not very exciting. I wanted to put it down after about 20 minutes. And the scores for Garfield, the girls gave it an average score of 3 out of 5, but the boys didn't like it at all. Only 1 out of 5. Steady cuddles, sit, sit, calm down. Hello again, Furtlers. Still on a fishy theme. This is a cheat for Echo the Dolphin. Ow! On the Mega Drive. All you have to do on the code screen is type in the word, please followed by two letters, like um, ZZ, for instance. They will take you to uh, Ridgewater. You can also experiment with different sets of two letters to get you to other levels. Now then, if you'll just excuse me for a moment. Uh, cuddles! Uh, Daddy's here! Uh, uh. I don't know. And if you're a glutton for punishment, you can peruse some more of Nam's cheats on our Data Blast, which comes up at the end of the programme. To access it, it's very simple. All you will need is your Commodore Garden VHS video recorder. The bit of the programme to video is the credits, the bit at the end, read by the mothers of people who work on the programme. Then what you do is spool it back and play it forward again, but not at the normal speed. Watch this. You play it forward using your pause and your frame advance button. So it goes through really slowly, and then pages and pages of information appear for you. Over 90, in fact, and all completely free of charge. Last week's competition prize was to win one of these, a CDI player with software and, better still, a bad influence t-shirt. The question was, what do the initials FMV stand for? And the answer is Full Motion Video. The winner was Helen Thompson from the Isle of Man, and the prize will be winning its way to you. Congratulations. And so to this week's competition prize, which is as follows. An Amiga 1200, oh yes, and a modem, and the copy of the game Air Warrior, and the Bad Influence t-shirt. No prize will be complete without it. You'll need a competition question. It is as follows. Who played the ace pilot in Top Gun? Do you think you know? Give us a call on 0891 700 100. 0891 700 100. Calls will cost you no more than 25p, but get permission from whoever pays the phone bill before you dial. Lines, incidentally, stay up until midnight on Monday. Just before we go, have a look at this. Sunshine, please. It is the latest and greenest way to play a Game Boy. The solar battery pack. The idea is you charge it up by leaving it on your windowsill when it's sunny. And then you can just plug in your Game Boy when it's charged up and play away. Unfortunately, it's only available at the moment on import from Japan, where presumably they have better weather than us. Take it away, Andy. That's it from us. Bye. I singing in the rain trough, just singing in the rain. Sorry, Jean. <laughs>